Hey guys, it's been a minute. Uh, I wanted to welcome you back to the channel and let you know that I've uh, had a whole bunch of stuff going on here lately um, just outside of the hobby and I have though been collecting little bits and pieces that I think are really cool. The first thing I want to show you is this guy. If you've seen this before maybe on Facebook or on uh, RC groups or something. This is the KISS Keychain Control by Alex Fedorov, aka Fedor Commander. Um, I purchased one of these through his store. This is part of the first batch. Uh, I haven't even opened it. Um, and so this video, uh, I'm going to be talking about this, uh, why you might want it, what it does. Uh, it's by no means going to be in-depth, um, but this is a really, really cool feature. Uh, feature pack little keychain. Uh, device and, and what it is is this is a full-blown KISS GUI in your hand. No more needing to take your laptop with you if you need to do any kind of changes. You know the OSDs have given us um, the ability to make a lot of changes to your quad like your PIDs and your rates and your filters. But one of the things that KISS has not had is the ability to change motor direction or change some of your GUI only settings, flash your ESC, do um, filter sweeps to see where you've got noise on your quad, uh, gyro data, you know, and, and this little guy right here does all of that and more. Um, so I think you guys are going to enjoy that. Uh, just some other things coming up. Um, I am going to be taking this little beauty right here which is the Rotorex Atomic Fox. Uh, currently it is five inches. Um, I'm running it on 6S. Yeah, so I'm going to be taking this quad and converting it to 7 inch. That's right, 7 inch Rotorex Atomic Fox or as uh, some people on the Rotorex Slack group uh, connected to the FPV chat are calling it the Uber Fox or the Ultra Fox. Um, I have got some arms coming in from uh, Fancy FPV and so we'll be taking this guy and very soon we'll be converting it um, to 7 inch and I'm, I'm super excited about that. Um, I think it's going to be a really really cool quad. Uh, additionally I'll be returning it to Crossfire um, so as part of that but there's some really cool things that come with the kit that I've ordered which is just an arm kit for this um, I'm not actually uh, I didn't buy the full the full upgrade kit um, I'll just be doing an arm swap so this is going to be a complete rebuild uh, I'll take um, I'm going to try to keep these motors um, if you haven't seen these before these are the uh, the RDQ badass 2205 1800 kV motors I've been running this on uh, on 6S uh, with a lot of success. I really enjoy it. Um, this canopy's taking a beating. This is my second one. You can see it's actually uh, starting to come apart here. So I'll be talking to the guy who printed this, and hopefully he'll be able to hook me up with a replacement for just the cost of shipping. Um, but I do have a spare. Uh, so yeah, so that's coming. I, I do have some cool footage uh, from some spots that I shot uh, recently. Um, so stay tuned for that. I've got to get some more flying done. Fall is here. The leaves are real pretty. I've got a couple places I want to hit. Um, but yeah, without further ado, let's uh, let's get back into opening this guy up. All right, so a couple things you'll notice here. I've got my drone here. I've got a battery on it, but the battery is not connected. Um, I do have propellers removed because I'm going to show you some things here that will... Um, will involve the motors and we don't want the propellers on when you're doing any of these kind of tests always practice common sense safety when you have a battery connected to uh, the KKC and you have connected a USB micro cable to USB micro cable to your flight controller the menu system looks like this you've got flight controller setup ESC setup model info receiver and motors motors test tool setup tool info okay so flight controller setup is pretty straightforward it's got all your PIDs you press up to go to the bottom of the page down to go back to the top where you can scroll through individually to change something you 
press down in so you press not up or down but down and then you've got the ability to move left or right and then up or down will change the videos or the, the values rather and if you want to save it press and hold to the left and it will save and it will exit back out okay so f the various menus here you've got PIDs you've got your rates um, you've got TPA settings all your filters adaptive low-pass filter determ y'all roll notch etc uh, VTX settings. So this one is detecting my prior settings from the flight controller. It knows I'm running a tramp. Um, it knows I'm on A1 and that when I'm disarmed I'm at 25 milliwatts and when I'm armed I'm at 600. Uh, if you have any alarm set up on your flight controller it should read those here. You can also change those here. Um, it knows I'm running crossfire, uh, what my failsafe uh, time is and any dead band information here. what all of my auxiliary channels, so my arm channel, my if I want to go into level mode, excuse me, what uh, auxiliary my buzzer's on, LED, turtle mode, etc. Okay? You can also, if you didn't know, you can set up your VTX power on a control knob or a switch as well. And for a tramp, that's really cool because it's linear. So if you want to set 75 milliwatts, you can. Uh, what kind of frame you've got. So general settings, roll orientation, pitch orientation, yaw orientation. That's if you have to put your flight controller some funny way. Um, you know, level max angle. So if you're flying in level mode. It's got all of your ESC related um, input output for min throttle, uh, max command, min command, etc. are all set up here. What D shot you're running. So if you want to, so for example, I've got 32 amp ESCs on this one. Ooh, ooh. I've got 32 amp ESCs on this one. Um, but a V1 flight controller, I can go to D-Shot 1200. And hold left, and it should save. Let's see if it did, in fact, save. Nope. Hmm. Maybe I don't know how to save. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Press and hold down on the center button. And it comes up with the option to save, load, backup, restore. So you hit save. And it'll beep at you. And there you go. Look. ESC mode, D-Shot 1200. All right, so that's all set. So if you want to fly 3D, here's your other options. Um, any of your advanced tab things, like, you know, whether you're running debugger, whether you're running OSC, do you want to use the motors as a buzzer? So this is a full-fledged KISS GUI. I, it is in beta. I did notice one thing that's missing from this. I just talked with Alex about it, and he agreed that I was right. Um, it is, at the time of this video, missing flight controller orientation. So if you run reverse motors like I do, um, right now you cannot adjust that. He is very quick about these kinds of things and he's going to get that fixed very quickly um, and probably by the time in fact you even see this that will be included. Um, so that's all your advanced menu stuff. So we'll press left to go out. Go into ESC setup. There's no LiPo connected. Guess what? It's not going to detect anything. It's a pretty cool little feature. Uh, if you're curious what model info you have on here, um, here you go. Here's your firmware. Is it activated? What voltage does it see right now? Is it armed? Things like this. Very handy little diagnostic here. Press left. Receiver and motors. So if I had my receiver powered on, which I do not, one second. Okay. What you should see, see that top bar, the throttle is moving as I move it, and then yaw moves as well. All right, and if I want to arm something, and look at that, motors are spinning. So this is a neat little diagnostic here um, that tells you receiver and motors. So you can see all your various auxiliary channels and what they're doing. Um, you can see it from a uh, 
micro out microsecond output perspective. So here's your throttle value changing. Hopefully you can make that out as I move the throttle. That first icon is moving. It'll tell you it's disarmed. Um, it'll tell you what the motors are spinning at. So hopefully. Yep, so at idle speed, you can see all the values changing. All right, so let's go back. Motor test. So I'm going to go over or press 1, enter to, oops, not down. Enter. This is hard to do with my index finger. I'm used to doing it with my thumb. Uh, and I'll press up to enable output. You noted these, notice the asterisk showed up beside motor test. I'm going to go down, press enter. I'm going to spool up motor 1. Yes. And now, with my throttle, there it is. Motor 1 is spinning. And I can change that up or down. So there's your motor test. So we're going to go in, going to go down, enter again to exit, go up. Enter to exit, uh, go down to turn it off, enter to exit, and hold left to go back. All right. Uh, if you want to do any kind of tool setup, I'll, I'll briefly walk you through this. But basically what this is, is if you want to set this up as a serial bridge, he's included that ability in here. Uh, I don't know at the time if it's capable, but there are. Um, he is doing some testing to use this on uh, Crossfire, so you can use this as a tool to update your Crossfire if you get one of the main transmitters. And you can set the baud rate, or if you're a lefty, you can flip the screen and have this button be over here on your left hand, and it'll make it a little more ergonomic for you. So that's a pretty cool little feature. One of the things that you'll notice about this is with it under LiPo power, you can go into the flight controller setup. And you'll notice that the number of menus changed from 10 to 8. And that is similar to the way it would operate when you're uh, powered under LiPo to the actual GUI. So some of the things in here you'll notice will change. Um, for example, VTX, you know, it, when we looked at it just a moment ago, it was showing the Immersion RC Tramp. And now it's not showing that, and that's because we're under um, uh, power of the LiPo. Um, I've been told there's some other really cool things coming, like the ability to look at um, like a spectrum analyzer graph, uh, some things like that. So that's coming. Um, uh, just a couple of my thoughts on this. Um, I had some issues with mine where it just wasn't working. And so what I've done is I've taken some layers of electrical tape and I've slowly kind of pieced it together here. And that keeps you from... Um, causing any shorts on it so that's a tip it doesn't currently come with the case it ships just like this there's actually no pigtail you have to provide your own um, Alex is doing this because uh, he wants to give us something that is valuable at the lowest possible uh, price point um, and what that means is that you're not going to get a case you've got a nice protective screen over the OLED which is awesome um, thank you for that Alex uh, but you know if you want you know your own case um, you're going to have to print one your own, make one on your own. Uh, maybe in the future someone will make some and sell them for, for cheap. Um, but, but mostly uh, it's just going to be like this. The other thing that's worth noting is currently right now they're only available from Alex. He's sending them to a couple suppliers. Those should be arriving soon and, and may have arrived uh, if you're watching this much later uh, than when I actually publish this. Um, but, it, you know, it... it for me, it was like $34, $35 US, and ended up, I think, being like $40 shipped um, just because I got in early. If you're buying it from a US retailer and you're located in the US, uh, that price will, will be around the $30 price point, plus or minus, I don't know, $8, we'll say. Um, that's just a guess. Uh, if you're elsewhere in the world, um, you know, you can order from Alex directly. If you're in the EU or if you're in Australia, I believe he sent some to the team at uh, Impulse RC. So um, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you have KISS, um, you should really consider uh, getting this. This is a, a really cool tool to have in your pocket. Um, one thing, it, it, if you don't find it, if you're not part of the Facebook group, if you need to update firmware, if Alex provides firmware to this, what you do is uh, you connect um, the USB cable to your computer 
you download the software to your computer um, and before you connect the KKC to your USB cable press and hold the joystick to the right and then connect it and that will bring it up in boot mode and what will happen is this little LED right here will slowly flash instead of being steady on or a quick flash it'll kind of be like a little heartbeat pulse in and out um, and then you just drag your firmware uh, from your folder uh, into the little drive that will show up on your computer that says KKC. It'll upload and then it'll disconnect itself and you'll be good to go and you can always verify that by going down the menu settings to tool info. You can see what version of firmware you're on. Um, so yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, I hope you can pick one of these up if you're if you're into Flying Kiss. And uh, stay tuned to this channel. I'll have some more cool videos, um, just like I mentioned at the start of this, coming up soon. Uh, at the time, I have just finished putting the, the Ultra Fox together, so stay tuned for a video on that. And if you're not already a member of this channel, if you would, consider subscribing to this. I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching.